So I've checked the agency policy and it is time to change the patient's central venous access device uh, dressing. Um, typically with transparent dressings, as in this case, we change it every five to seven days. So I know that it's time to do that per our policy and I'm gonna go ahead and begin. So when I go into the patient's room, as always, I'm going to make sure that I wash my hands and provide per privacy, and I'm gonna identify the patient with two medical identifiers and verify that with the EMR. Okay, so I know that it's time to do the dressing change, So, and I verified that it's the correct date to do that, and I'm gonna go ahead and start my um, skill. So here I have my um, supplies, so I'm gonna get that ready. I have a um, dressing change tray. Um, this is going to be a sterile procedure, so we wanna make sure that we have that sterile package. I have a um, sterile packaged um, stat lock to secure my um, central line, and I also am going to change the needleless connector and the, um, the cap that goes on the needleless connector. All right. So now I'm ready to begin my procedure and I'm gonna do my assessment, but I need to put on a mask. So I go ahead and I open up my sterile package and I take the mask out of the package. Some don't, do not come with masks, but if they don't, um, make sure you have that when you come into the room. I'm also going to um, supply the patient with a mask if they cannot tolerate it then I will ask them to turn their head opposite of the central venous catheter that I'm doing the dressing change on. So now I have my mask on so I can do my assessment of the site. I'm gonna wash my hands. We just don't want any bacteria getting onto the area once I start taking the old dressing off. And we wouldn't want the patient to sneeze or cough on that area either. All right, so I'm inspecting the site and I see that the dressing is still intact. I'm gonna perform some palpation and I don't notice any subcutaneous emphysema and the patient denies any pain at the site. So now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the old dressing. Sometimes you can use a um, like an adhesive remover if you need to, or alcohol use, uh, adhesive remover if the dressing is very sticky and you can't get it off. But I'm gonna loosen all the ends as much as I can. Making sure that I'm securing that, I, that um, catheter. So now when I remove the transparent dressing, I'm going to remove it towards the insertion site. Being careful not to touch the actual insertion site. This also has a um, chlorhexidine um, impregnated disc or gauze placed on it. So I also wanted to remove that as well so I can look really um, at the site itself. So again, it's just like any IV site assessment, make sure you're looking for erythema, swelling, drainage, or any redness, or if patient complains of any pain. So now I'm gonna go ahead and remove my clean gloves and get ready to prepare my sterile field by applying sterile gloves. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take this out of the package Set that on my table. And when you're opening sterile packages, we do open away from you. And then um, we open from side to side. Being aware to only touch the one inch border with your contaminated hands. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is um, I'm going to put my stat lock on my sterile field there. <clears throat> and I'm also gonna put my needleless connector since I'm gonna demonstrate how to change the needleless connector. Okay, and then I'm just gonna have these available. 
I'll wash my hands and I'm going to apply my sterile gloves. Okay, and I'm going to grab my sterile gloves out of this package. start putting these on here. All right, so once I have my sterile gloves on, now I can go ahead and cleanse the site. So we have a chlorhexidine prep pad here, squeeze to activate. And then you're going to be cleaning your site for a total of 30 seconds. Depending on what your policy is at your facility, um, that's how you should clean it. So for 30 seconds, I let it dry. So now that I cleanse the site, um, I'm also going to look at the catheter to, to note if there's any dislodgement. If I suspect dislodgement, I'm going to measure the catheter from the insertion site to the hub. And I need to compare that to the initial insertion measurement to make sure that it hasn't migrated or moved or been dislodged. Next, I'm going to go ahead and apply my chlorhexidine impregnated gauze. And then we can also use um, the, the um, barrier adhesive so that my dressing can, st can stick a little better. If the patient has any allergies to that or any kind of thing, you wouldn't want to use that. All right, and then next, um, we can also secure the catheter with a securement device such as a stat lock. So the stat lock will go right in here. And then now I can use my transparent dressing to go over. There we go. Once I have my transparent dressing on, securing the device, I can go ahead then and I can remove my sterile gloves. my hands and I'm going to label so I would go ahead and I would label the date my initials and I'll put that on my transparent dressing so it doesn't occlude the actual site and then now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to demonstrate just changing one of the needles connector devices you would want to do all of them but needles connectors should be changed um, Recommended is about every 96 hours. However, you would, you would want to change them in advance of that or as needed if you notice that they are possibly have debris in there or soiled with dried blood. This. So now that I've done my dressing change, I'm going to go ahead and change my needleless connector. So what I've done already is I have um, prepared my needleless connector by attaching it to my pre-filled normal saline syringe. And I'm going to go ahead now, I'll wash my hands and put my gloves on, and we can go ahead and, and change that. Again, using your aseptic non-touch technique, we know that we, we're just going to demonstrate doing one of the needleless connectors, so I'm going to go ahead and choose this one. And it's clamped already, and I have my needles connector 
connected to my normal saline. I've already primed it and I'm going to go ahead and change that. So I'm going to remove it and then I'm going to take my aseptic disinfectant and go ahead and do a vigorous scrub of the hub for five seconds at least. Make sure you're not touching the inside of that hub. And then I'm going to take out my sterile connector with my saline and I'm going to go ahead, open, aspirate, and then I'm going to go ahead and flush with the recommended amount for policy. So I have my needleless connector now attached to my new one. And then I'm going to go ahead when I'm finished with that and I'm going to disinfect again. And I'm going to apply my new disinfectant cap. And then that's clamped. So now I have my dressing done and I have my needleless connector attached with a disinfectant cap. So I'm going to remove my gloves. I'm going to dispose of all my supplies. Put the patient in a position of comfort. Do my culture of safety checks and make sure that I'm do I document the dressing change and also the um, needleless connector and disinfectant cap um, change as well. So also include in your documentation any assessment of the actual um, catheter IV or catheter site um, and what you observed and what you um, did in your assessment and how your patient tolerated it.